Jesus Christ. Beautiful reading from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians today. He talks about boasting, not of anything of his own, of not being proud, but indeed being humbled and boasting of his weakness. I believe that in the Byzantine Catholic Church, we help those who are ordained to realize their humility, perhaps no more so than at the ordination of a subdeacon when he's asked to stand with the, the uh, towel over his head, looking like a nice baba with a babushka. <laughs> but humility, such an important part of our life as Christians, to remember that in truth it is not us, but it is grace, grace that carries us, and that grace is enough, that grace of God, that in, with that grace our weakness reaches perfection, and that our life is not a reaching of a particular plateau. We get up onto that plateau and it's clear sailing. No, life is a continuous growth. In Eastern theology, we call it theosis in Greek or divinization, that growing closer to God. And we say, well, God is infinitely away from us. What difference does it make if we do two steps or ten steps? It's still an infinite distance, and how true that is. And yet that's what God is calling us to do. And he wants us to continue to grow to the point where we are so intimately related with him in heaven. That growth is what Jesus talks about in the gospel today. That growth, that he plants a seed, the seed, the word of God in our hearts with our baptism. And he asks us to help him grow that seed. He tells us that he's not going to do all the work, if you will. But in fact, it's up to us to cooperate with him. No, we don't proceed or grow in the process of divinization by ourselves. And it's not us who do it. And it's not works alone that will get us to heaven, if you will. It does take grace. It does take the seed, first of all. And then we need to acknowledge that we have that seed within our very hearts, or it will not grow. And then we need to cooperate with him. God's trying to to tell us a message, give us a message. But so often, we don't stay put long enough to hear it. We've got so many things to do. We've got to go here, and we've got to go there, and we've got to do this, and we've got to do that. And Jesus is telling us there is one way to heaven. And yes, within that way, we do need to take care of business, if you will. But it is that one way, and the way is Jesus Christ himself. As he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We know 
that our life is this has a purpose. Once talking to a friend of mine who started attending some activities with a Buddhist community, and he was telling me how how in, how he learned to have peace in his heart. One of the greatest things he learned was stop looking for purpose in your life. Your life has no purpose. It has no, there's no, just let it go with purpose. Just accept it as it comes. And then you will be at peace. How different from the Christian message that we do have the, whole, the gift of the Word of God or the Holy Spirit within us and that it leads us and that we grow. And each one of us knows that it's up to me. I can't rely on other people to get me to heaven. I must be part of that cooperation. But it's not a rugged individualism that we know. That in fact, it is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. But that personhood, our personhood, finds reality in community, in the body of Christ, in the church. And so, yes, we do need to be that good ground that Jesus talks about in which the, the seed will grow. And yes, each of us may need a little bit of the good old-fashioned hoeing to break up the ground. And yes, we must acknowledge that we live in a world of many distractions. And those distractions, like weeds, can grow up around us and choke us, choke our life if we allow it. Sometimes we realize that we may even be placed where others seem to come and take our life away from us. Not only other people, but circumstances. You know, how could this happen to me? That is responsible for my not getting to heaven. Just like the, the seed that fell along the roadside and the birds came by and, and, and took it away before it could grow. We can all come up with good excuses. But God is telling you and me, we are each. It is his intention that each of us be with him. And as true as that is for each of us, it's also true for us as a parish, as a church, as an eparchy of Parma. Yes, we can think that circumstances around us are responsible for a lack of success, if you will, a lack of our growth toward God. We can say there are so many distractions. We need money. We need committed individuals. And we don't have them, especially priests. We can use these as excuses. And God tells us that we need to be that good ground. And so it's up to us to prepare ourselves, 
to help us to be that good ground. And if we are that good ground, and you talk about humility, the Greek or the Latin word is humus for ground. Ground, the word ground is humus, from which the word humility comes. And yes, we are that ground. And yes, we are going to expect to get hard sometimes, like rock. And we're going to ask God and the rest of the church to come and help us to become good, soft ground that accepts that seed and helps it to grow. And we know that in order to do that, it takes some humiliation, perhaps. Being broken before we can beget good ground. And not only broken, but even with a little fertilizer on us, it might not smell so good. It is necessary for us to go through these steps, steps of suffering, as Jesus did on the cross, this suffering that brings resurrection. And we've seen samples of that already. And we know there is greater things yet. God's grace is enough. God said to me, my grace is enough for you, for in weakness power reaches perfection. Glory to Jesus Christ.